hooray, hooray. Whew, we made it through another week. I always feel that way. I'm like, oh. <laughs> when I come here for my Friday tutorial with you guys, it's definitely like a, oh, it's a sigh of relief because we've made it through another week and I definitely feel it. Having trouble with my, um, hi Pam, having trouble with my, uh, <laughs> what's the word? <laughs> my tripod today. So I've gone back to the old standby tripod and I'm going to let the husband take a look at the other one. I don't know what's happening, but it kept like the iPad kept slipping out of it. So <laughs> I don't know. It was just one of those things. It was just not meant to be today. So we are back to our tried and true wooden <laughs> tripod. <laughs> if you guys could see it, it's literally a wooden block. It cracks me up. It's so funny. Um, but yeah, hi, hi. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to see you guys. I love our Fridays together. I love our Thursdays together, too, but I love Fridays because just like I said, it, it marks the end of the week. It's like, oh, all right, we can settle down just a little bit. Love it. So today we are making a pair of earrings and... These earrings use two different tools that are two of my very, very favorite tools from Beetalon. And one of them is very difficult to show live. So I'm gonna show you the tool and walk you through it, but we're not actually gonna use it. Um, I'm just gonna have to talk you through it. I'm not gonna let that stop me because it is one of my absolute favorite tools. And if I had another person in here with me, I could pull it off, but I'm just one person. So <laughs> we're gonna do the best that we can with this. Um, but we're gonna use the wire coiling gizmo and I'm using the deluxe professional version of this So it's a little bit bigger than the other two sizes um, and It's like I said, it's hard to film particularly because of the way the lip on this desk is it just won't stay So I'm just gonna hold it up and we're gonna talk about it and I'll, I'll show you like talk you through how you use it and I already have a, a coiled piece of wire ready to go. And then we're gonna use the Contastic, which is not hard to film, but it's also one of my very favorite tools. If you guys happen to catch Facebook Live yesterday on Beetalon's website, or on Beetalon's uh, Facebook page, Sandra Lupo was there showing off the Contastic, and I am such a fangirl. I'm such a fangirl of Meredith, too. Hi, Meredith. <laughs> Uh, two extraordinary designers is like something I always worry that like when you get two great minds together that the world might actually just explode. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't really think that. I'm not that crazy. But it's really cool to see, you know, the creator of something use it and put it to, you know, put it in action. You get to see it in action in the hands of the person who, you know, came up with the idea. So that's really, really cool. It's one of my all-time favorite extra tools. I wouldn't call it an essential. On some days I might, but it is definitely a tool that I love and I use it all the time. It's There are just so many uses for it. It's, it's a great one to have. Um, so if you don't have one, definitely check it out. And it pairs really well with the wire coiling gizmo. Those two it's, it's sort of like the Contastic and Silver Silk. They go together so well. The Contastic and the Wire Cooling Gizmo, it's the same kind of relationship. It was like the two things were just really meant to be together. So we are going to walk through both of those and I'll show you how to mix them together um, to create some really fun things. But, because there's always somebody out there. No, you guys are always amazing, so I don't really mean that. Um, but there are grumpy pants in the world, right? So um, this is a very similar project to one that I did over on Silver Silk. We didn't use the wire coiling gizmo. We used some hollow mesh. So this is a little similar. <laughs> in fact, it's very, very similar. But I... I figured, you know what, what the hey, we'll do it anyway because not everybody watches the Silver Silk Facebook Lives. And yeah, Betty, Betty says, are you sure? What am I sure about? <laughs> and a laughing face. Now I feel like I missed something. <laughs> um, yeah, and then somebody else said something too. <laughs> Rachel says, I love your lipstick color. <laughs> what shade is it? Okay, what's so up? This is totally unjewelry related, but let me tell you what, what the mix is that I have on my lips because it's two different things and they are so cheap, <laughs> but it's just, it's, I don't know, it works for me. So non-jewelry related just for a second. I use a, um, 
a lip liner in Wild Clover, which is like a pink color. And then I use a Wet n Wild, like I think it's called Bare Naked over the top of it. And then I just mix them together. I know. Hey, you asked, so you got your answer. <laughs> it is not a super expensive combination, but anyway, thank you. Um, let's talk about the wire, wire coil and gizmo while I have you guys facing this direction. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Rita. Um, because it's, it is easier for you to see it this direction than laying flat to really kind of get an idea of how it works, okay? So this is the main part of the wire coil and gizmo. It comes in two pieces, but this is like where the action happens. So it comes in two pieces like this, and you're gonna get some rods that come with it in different um, sizes. So basically what you would do is you're just gonna clamp this to the table. Um, but the table that I'm sitting at has a lip on it, so it doesn't clamp very well. So that's why we're not gonna actually clamp it down. Um, it definitely needs to be on something that's flush on the edge just so that it doesn't pull off. And you just wanna twist it on there and clamp it on there really, really well. It's not gonna go anywhere, okay? You want to take the other side and do the same thing. So the other side has the holes in it. And this is where you're gonna actually slide the rod from one side of the tool to the other. And this is just gonna help make it sturdy. You know, it stabilizes the rod a bit so that it is not like this, okay? You, you definitely need both sides, which conveniently come both sides in the package. Really? <laughs> no, you're just gonna have to buy that one piece all by itself. Sometimes I wonder why I say the things I say. <laughs> anyway, so to use this side, this side has an opening here that you are going to, separate from the, from the crank, Okay, you open this guy up. It's got these little teeth in it. This chuck, I think is what it's called. I've actually busted two of these. I'm really, really hard on this tool. Like it's crazy how hard I am on it. Um, so you're gonna take whatever size of the rod that you want to use. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. <laughs> and you're just gonna slip that in, which, okay, let's see without poking you guys in the eye <laughs> via iPad. So you just slip that in there, right in the center, and then you're gonna tighten that down, okay? And when you tighten that down, now this guy is not gonna move. But you see how there's still a little bit of space here? You're gonna utilize that space with your wire. The chuck, yes, I was right, wasn't I? <laughs> Hooray for Sarah, Sarah got the word right today. All right, so you attach the rod, and again, you're gonna run that through the other side, and all of this will be attached to your desk. And the um, Professional Deluxe version has really, really long um, rods that come with it. I don't know the exact measurement, but it is quite a bit longer than the original version, and then there's like a middle version, I can't remember what it's called. Um, I like this one the most just because I can make really long lengths of coil, okay? Lengths, rather. <laughs> and then I can use those on other things. So to use the wire with this, I know this is such a weird way to show this tool, but we're doing the best that we can, right? I'm just a one woman army here. So I don't, I normally don't take the wire off of the spool when I'm using this because it's impossible to pre-measure um, the wire for this, particularly if you're using different size rods. I would imagine you could probably estimate, but who am I kidding? I, math and numbers and guessing, this just not my thing. All right, so while this is attached to your desk, or your table or whatever you're using, you're gonna take whatever size wire you wanna use. I am using 24 gauge wire for today's project, okay, to make the coil. And I'm using the smallest rod. I just broke a fingernail right there. <laughs> I'm using the smallest rod that comes with the tool. I take the end of my wire and I just take it and make a little bend in it. And then in one of those spaces where you can see, I just stick my wire right on in there, just like that, okay? So now my wire, for the most part, is attached. And then once you turn the crank once or twice, which is impossible to do without this being attached to <laughs> a stationary 
surface, okay, you get the idea. You're going to turn the crank and you will wind this out and you're going to create a coil with your wire. And all it takes, you don't have to like tie your wire or turn any kind of crazy knots over here on this end. Just stick the very end of it in where your rod is and you're good to go. It'll stay, I promise. As you are twisting and coiling the wire, I like to, I, I will twist with my right hand and then with my left hand, I guide the wire with my index finger and my thumb right on that rod and, you know, just just help to make sure that all of the coils are nice and lined up because sometimes you can get a little crazy. I mean, if you take your eyes off of it for just a few seconds, you can end up with, you know, big gaps between your wraps and you definitely don't want that unless that's the look that you're going for, which you can do that too. So that's the wire coiling gizmo kind of in a nutshell in sort of a really weird way. Sorry to have to show it to you that way, but I'm not going to let it stop me because like I said, I love this tool and you can use it in so many different ways. I wish that I had a better setup here so that I could show you all the different ways that you could use this tool. Um, Meredith, my dear, if you are still watching, let's do the wire coiling gizmo the next time I am in town because it's one of my favorites and you guys have a setup that we could definitely take advantage of. Okay, so when you get done, you've got a nice coil of wire in a really long length here, okay? And you can use any size <clears throat> excuse me, any gauge wire that you want to. Mine still has a couple of little gaps in there, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. For the most part, all of the wraps are nice and tight and ready to turn into something else. So you could actually put this on another piece of wire and start turning it on the wire coiling gizmo. That's why it's important that maybe I show this to you in a studio setup <laughs> with Meredith instead because I can talk you through this all day long, but it's different when you actually see it in action. So, oh, but you can definitely go check out the YouTube channel, Beetleon's YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure there are some really good um, wire coiling gizmo videos there. I'm pretty sure. I'm wrong. I'm not in trouble, I promise. <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to end up with a coil like this with the 24 gauge wire on the smallest um, rod, okay? So we have this nice long length and you can see it's got a hole in it. So you can run another piece of wire all the way through it. That's exactly what we're going to do and we're going to do that down on the mat. So let's get you guys moved around. Okay. So I'm back with my regular block tripod, so I apologize in advance. Let me move the light just a little bit. Hopefully everything still looks nice and bright. Okay, so here we have our wire and you can make coils in any color. You can do some coils. Um, Ooh, Meredith, yes, let's do it in Tucson. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm game, I'll be there. All right, so you, like I was saying, you can do this with any color, any gauge, you can use any of the rods. So there are a ton of combinations that you can come up with with just the one toil, uh, to toil, what's that? <laughs> with the one tool um, and your results will be awesome. Okay, so we've got this really, really long piece here. We're really only gonna need about nine inches of this, but I'm gonna leave it just like it is and we'll tri trim off the end when we get to um, whoa, the cone portion here. And that's what, sorry, dropped a bead. That's what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create a cone using our coiled wire but you can't just put it on here and coil it like it is. You're gonna have to have a nice core that's a little bit stiffer because this is obviously very springy and is not gonna hold its shape unless we give it some structure. So to give it some structure, what we're gonna do is I have cut a long piece of red for the holidays, 20 gauge artistic wire, okay? Um, you could probably get no, I don't believe you can. 20 gauge is probably the biggest gauge that you're gonna be able to fit in the smallest coil that you create, okay? I, I don't think an 18 gauge would fit through there. So definitely 20 gauge is what you wanna use, but you can step down to 22 gauge if you wanted to. Um, you're, you're gonna need about 18 inches of this, and that's probably a little much, 
but it's better to have more than you need than not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the Contastic. Now, if you guys have not seen the Contastic before, I've used it here and I've used it um, over on the Silver Silk page. So uh, the Contastic is the handle and it comes with three different size cones. We're using the largest cone um, that comes with the tool. And you can see the hole that runs through there. We're gonna take the end of our wire. Hold on just a second. I'm actually gonna cut a longer piece of wire. I'm not feeling good about the one that I had there. It just feels a little short. Okay, so we're gonna take our wire and we are gonna put it through the hole and then we're gonna take that inch and a half, two inches and just put it down like that and hold it with our finger, okay? And then we're gonna start turning on the tool with our wire. We're gonna turn maybe three or four times just so that we have a nice good base started and that that red color is gonna be part of the design. So we want that red to show on the bottom, okay? So after you've got as many wraps around as you want before you're ready to start the actual coiling part, you're going to come to the end of your wire and you just wanna slide on the coiled wire, okay? and it fits really nicely on that 20 gauge wire. All right, so we wanna bring that all the way down to where we were working. And I do wanna tighten this up just a, just a hair, so I'm gonna undo one of these. Actually, I'm gonna undo two of these. I kinda of lost my um, grip on this when I was adding the wire. All right, so we've gone around about three times. Now you just wanna go ahead and slide the coiled wire down to your working wire here, okay? And you're gonna push down with your thumb and you're just gonna to continue to create that cone shape, pushing down that coiled wire onto the surface of your cone, on the cone mandrel, okay? And I'm just twisting and guiding the wire. And I'm going slow. Joan, you are a rock star. Thank you so much for being here and doing that. I appreciate it so, so much. All right, so I'm getting close to the top here. Going slow. Just want to take your time with this okay uh, i'm right up to the top okay and you can see I, I have a little bit of the coiled wire left i have plenty of the artistic wire left so what i want to do is i want to go ahead and cut this off of the tool and then we're going to clean up the end here so I'm gonna need my cutter tool. Toil, what's up with that? I've got that in my brain today. My cutter tool, I'm just gonna snip that off to release our cone from the cone tastic, okay? And now we're gonna clean this part up. So I'm gonna trim some of this off, get that out of the way. And I'm gonna come in with my fingernail. This is why I never can keep a good manicure, you guys. And if you are jewelry makers, you know, particularly if you work with wire, it's nearly impossible to keep a good manicure. You can see where the wire and things have cut into my nails. It's from doing things like this. So I'm gonna come down here on the wire as close to that last loop and put my fingernail in between there and kind of pull to separate the, the cool, the, <laughs> this is an impossible word for me to say. Okay, so I'm, I'm separating that out and you can see that little piece of wire right there. I'm gonna cut that as gently as I can without cutting the artistic wire. Just gonna snip that so then I can, well, I didn't get it that time, but then I want to go ahead and get the rest of the, the, the coil off, okay? So this is what we have at the top. And you can go ahead and come in with your round nose pliers if you want to. Ow. To, <laughs> dangerous today, to kind of curve that in if you want. You can even twist that around even more. You can cut your coiled wire off before you take it off the tool and then continue to coil around once or twice more with the red if you want. I'm not gonna do that. 
I just want to make a nice flush cut with mine and kind of tuck that in with a pair of pliers and I'm good to go. Okay, because nobody really sees the top of this. You can see I just made like a little crook in that wire with my pliers. Okay, so now you have this really beautiful cone that has the two different wires going through it. You've got that red and you can barely see the pops of red that show between the spaces in the wraps there. And then you've got the red here at the bottom. You can cut some of these off on the bottom if you want to, but I really like them. So I'm going to leave them. I am spacing them out just a little bit with my fingers just so that they have that space in between there um, because we're going to fill this space up with some beads. Okay, so this part is ready to go. This will look really beautiful with some green wire to make Christmas tree earrings or Christmas tree charms. Um, you could use the different size uh, cones on the Contastic to make them smaller if you wanted to, because this is, this is definitely a large cone, but it comes with a medium and small size cone as well. So you could definitely size these down if you were gonna make charms out of these and you wanted to use them on a bracelet instead of as earrings, okay? So, I'm gonna sit this to the side for just a second and we're gonna talk about the beads that we're using. So I've pulled two really beautiful beads and a charm from the Santa's Workshop Mix from Jesse James Beads. I used this yesterday in a project um, and there's also a YouTube project coming out over the weekend where I'm using, using even more of the Santa's Workshop Beads. It's a really, really beautiful mix, but one of my absolute favorite beads from the mix was this kind of pave style red and white bead. It's very peppermint-esque, definitely says Christmas, but you could totally rock this for Valentine's Day as well, or let's be honest, any time of the year. <laughs> Who doesn't love bling? And then there are some white rondelles in the mix, so I've grabbed a, a, a white rondelle and this little flower charm that's got the bling in the center, it's very reminiscent of poinsettia, poinsettias that are um, very popular here in the U.S. I don't know if they are elsewhere. I know that they're very hard to grow. Um, I've learned that from experience, but it's usually a very common flower for this time of year. All right, so those are the three beads that we're going to use, and we're going to put this white bead, it's going to be more towards the inside of the cone, so you're not going to see it very much, but you do see it coming through that red, so that peppermint kind of feeling is going to go all the way through this design. So there's not going to be any empty space in there. So what we're going to do, and actually this is going to work up really, really quickly, so we're actually almost done, which is amazing. Um, I've cut a section of 22 gauge wire and I'm going to create a wrapped loop on either side, but we're gonna start on one end here. Okay, I'm gonna come down on that wire about an inch and a half, two inches. We're gonna bend that wire 90 degrees and then I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers and I'm gonna go up and over adjust my grip, take the wire on around, and then I'm gonna switch hands and go ahead and wire wrap around about three times. And I just realized that I did this the wrong way. <laughs> I didn't do this the wrong way, but I am missing the flower. We're gonna go ahead, I'm, a, I'm gonna start over. <laughs> We're gonna, we need to wire wrap this in there, okay? And I just forgot, we're not using a jump ring for this because I didn't want this guy to come loose. So we're gonna do the same thing, no problem. We're just starting over again with our loop. But before we do the wire wrapping, we're actually gonna thread that flower on, okay? So same thing, coming in with the round nose pliers up and over. I'm gonna adjust the grip and take this on around. But now before I do the wire wrapping here, we are gonna go ahead and thread this on. So there's not gonna be an extra connection here. I'm not gonna use a jump ring. I'm just gonna slide this end of this wire through the loop on the flower and then just pop those two together so that we've got a nice secure connection there. And now I'm gonna do the wire wrapping part and I'm actually gonna hold on to this with some of my bent chain nose pliers just like so, just grabbing that loop 
and then switching hands to do the wire wrapping. It's just a more secure uh, dangle situation, if you will. All right, so there's our tail. We're gonna cut that off. And now you can see we've got, well, first thing we've got is the wire sticking out. We wanna clean that up just a tiny bit with our pliers. Don't want that to get caught on anything, but we've got a very secure connection here between our charm and what will be the rest of our earring, okay? So now we're ready to add the beads and then we're gonna put the cone on. So the first bead is gonna be this beautiful pave style bead. I'm just gonna thread that one on and then we're gonna thread on the rondelle. Okay, and now we're gonna thread on the cone. Now you'll notice the beads are not gonna fill up the entire cone, but that's okay because what is up towards the top in here, you're not gonna see any of that, okay? And really you're not gonna see much of that white bead either. If I trim off, let's trim off one of these, one of these wraps. Well, even that's not really gonna make a, a lot of difference, but anybody that gets close enough to you, you can see that white bead in there. I just didn't want there to be negative space there. Um, for one thing, it makes it harder to get a good wire wrap here on the top. You wanna be sure that you, you don't have any movement here, if that makes sense. So that rondelle is actually functional as well. It is ensuring that our wire is not gonna slip. Okay, so there's that. And we're gonna go ahead and create a wrap sweep on the top and then let's make an ear wire together and I will let you guys go. <laughs> All right, so bending that wire 90 degrees, same thing, round nose pliers coming in, up and over, on around, and then we're gonna wire wrap here. And I've got room to do four, so I'm gonna go ahead and do four, okay? And you'll notice that the wraps loop on the top and the wraps loop on the bottom are going two opposite directions. That's so that our flower here and our ear wire will both hang in the correct direction. All right, trimming off the tail. And the body of our earring is ready to go. That's, it was super easy and quick. The, the part that takes the longest is the part that you guys didn't get to see, and that's actually creating the, the coiled wire. But really, that part only takes about five minutes. And that's if you're going really slow. You could probably whip up the coil here in about two minutes if you're, if you're kind of messy like I am. <laughs> but, oh, I know, it's too soon. The end is here already. No, we're going to make an ear wire real quick for this because... You know, we want the whole thing to be handmade. So I have cut a piece of 20 gauge wire, definitely more than I need, but enough for two ear wires. And I'm gonna use the stepped bell making pliers for this. And I wanna be sure that on my end of the wire, I have a nice flush cut. So I'm gonna grab that wire. I'm gonna use the two millimeter, no, I'm sorry, the three millimeter mandrel. Is that right? Yeah, three millimeter mandrel on the stepped bell making pliers. I'm just gonna turn a loop. So we've got this shape here and you can see why that flush cut is so important so that that wire will sit nicely on the surface of this wire running this direction, okay? And now we're gonna put this back into the stepped bell making pliers with that loop just right up against the barrels down here. We're gonna use the biggest um, barrel on this which is a nine millimeter. We're just gonna guide the wire around, okay? meeting up to where our loop is and then we're going to stop we're going to take this off of the tool and now i'm going to come in with my flush cutter and to get the exact same cut every single time so that you always have matching ear wires i like for that loop to sit on the surface of the cutter tool here okay and then i make my cut that ensures that every single time i make an ear wire they are exactly the same size now, I don't particularly like the shape as it is, so I'm gonna come in with my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna grab the tip of that. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a bend, like so, and then I'm also gonna spread this open just a little bit, okay, to make it more, I don't know, it just makes it prettier in my, in my mind, okay? 
okay? All right, last step is to use the wire rounder on the tip of this. You don't wanna skip this step. Let me grab my tool here. And so there is one of these that you can get that is not battery operated. It is a wooden handle and it has that little cup on the end of it where you put your wire and then you make the motion to um, round off the tip of your wire. But Beetle On has the attachments that come separately from the, this is actually a bead reamer, it's battery operated, um, and it comes with bead reamer tips, but you can also put your wire rounder tips in it as well. And then you just wanna place the end of your wire here, and then you just want to round that out. Now, like I said, you don't wanna skip this step, particularly if you are giving these earrings as a gift or selling them because a flush cut is not good enough, okay? I know that you think that it is, but on a, or I don't know, maybe you don't, but maybe you completely understand. But for those of you who don't, just creating a flush cut on the wire on a microscopic level it's still not good enough because there can be tiny microscopic sizes, um, or little shards and burrs of wire that you don't see. So when you go to put this into your piercing, those little pieces and burrs can break off into your piercing and will cause a reaction. Um, it, it can cause infection, it can just cause pain. It's, it's just not a good thing. So when you hit this with some kind of sandpaper or with an emery board or you use an actual wire rounder tip and, and, and round that off, you're making sure that it goes into your piercing smoothly and it also doesn't have any, any little pieces that are left behind that could cause problems, okay? So don't skip that step at all. Never, never, never. <laughs> all right. So now all we're going to do is we're going to attach our ear wire to our earring. And to do that, I'm just going to use a pair of pliers and open that loop up. And I'm going to thread that on. Now, I did not work hard in this, but you should. <laughs> Do as I say and not as I do. So that's another step you definitely don't want to skip, just like rounding the tip of the wire. You definitely want to take your ear wire and put it on your block and work harden it a bit with your nylon hammer or whatever you choose to, you know, do your work hardening with. It's not going to take a whole lot. It is an ear wire, so it does need to have a little bit of movement to it, but... You do want to, you know, you want to harden it up just a bit so that it's not going to lose its shape. Okay, it's only a 20 gauge wire, so it definitely needs a little, a little extra love. All right, so then you've got both of your earrings and you are, voila, you are ready to go party. These definitely say party to me. I don't know what they say to you guys, but they, they say party to me. <laughs> I, I really, really think that these are holiday worthy. All right, let me flip you around. I'll put one of them in so you can see them. I know it was short and sweet today. Lights are blinding me. Um, but, you know, sometimes instant gratification quit jewelry is, is what you need. All right. So, before I show you, let me show you the one that I had on. You see this earring? Okay, this is made out of wire. Would you guys be interested in seeing a project like that? I know that it looks uh, hard, but it's not. I promise. This is actually one of my very, very favorite uses of the step to bell making pliers. If you guys want to see a project like this, let me know. Um, I can definitely work that in for you guys. But let's put in these because these are so fabulous. So the Contastic and the Wire Coil and Gizmo, you can get them both over at Beelon as well as that colored. Look how pretty. That is just so, so pretty. That's Nobody is going to have these earrings when you go to your holiday party. Nobody. You're going to be definitely unique, which is what my goal always is, right? I mean, I'm, I, I'm just kind of unique without even trying. Um, <laughs> but when it comes to jewelry, I like to have jewelry that is different from everybody else's. And I definitely think that this is a different design. People will stop and notice and they'll be like, I love your earrings. Where did you get those? And then you can say, I made them myself. They're for sale. Would you like to buy them? <laughs> 
<laughs> so keep that in mind. Just sell things right off your body at your holiday parties this time of year. Grab your red artistic wire over on the Beadalon website. Grab your beads. This is from Santa's Workshop over on jessejamesbeads.com. And that's it, you guys. Quick and easy. We made it to the end of another week. I can't stop looking at the earring in the, in the screen. Sorry. But, um, you guys, thank you for joining me on another one of our Fabulous Friday tutorials. That's what I'm going to call them, Fabulous Fridays. This is our Fabulous Friday tutorial. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I still have a ton of work to do. More things for you guys coming soon. And I'm working on some uh, button projects and some embellishment projects that are non-jewelry related. So... Stay tuned for all of that good stuff. I am super excited about that. I can't wait to share that with you guys. Definitely go check out Beadalon's YouTube page and Jesse James Bead's YouTube page because there are videos there, lots of education, lots of information, lots of inspiration. <laughs> I just wrote a poem and <laughs> it's definitely worth it. So when you get through with your Facebook Live, you go shop on your beads, go shop on your wire, and then go check out YouTube for some more inf inspiration. You guys have a wonderful day. I know I've already said that. I just keep talking. I'll just keep talking until somebody tells me to shut up. Have a great afternoon and I will see you guys same time, same place next week. Bye guys.